Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I have a very interesting video for you, which is uh, tempo relationships in Box Preludes and Fugues from the Well-Tempered Clavier. And in this video, I'm only focusing on one particular work that will demonstrate my theory. And then if you're uh, further interested in, in reading more about this topic, you can go right over to boxscholar.com and read my book in a blog, and especially the two chapters that I have on Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier and the tempo relationships that lie therein. So let's start here. BWV 849, Prelude and Fugue in C-sharp minor. It's one of Bach's greatest works. Uh, the fugue is, uh, I think it's triple fugue actually. I, I know for the longest period of time, I actually thought it was a double fugue, but I think it's more like a triple fugue with three subjects. It's a very long fugue. It's a very beautiful prelude. Well, back in the 1990s, 1992 uh, to be more exact, as a graduate student in musicology and also piano performance, I discovered something very intriguing that led to my I believe my discovery of Bach's system of tempos. And I believe that Bach followed a, a sort of a secret system. He didn't tell anyone about it, but it was part of his standard operating procedure as the way an architect would plan rooms of a building or a house. You know, an architect has to plan the dimensions of his structure that he's, that he's building. And the same with musical architecture. I believe Bach was the greatest musical architect in the history of music. So let's, let's talk a little about this Prelude and Fugue, and I'm going to show you some red flags in it. And when you do your reading through the Well-Tempered Clavier, look at these red flags. Really look at them very carefully and ask yourself, can it apply here? And, uh, and I have analyses of all the preludes and fugues that, you can, that can, you can read at your discretion. So the prelude is very beautiful. Usually this prelude is played very slowly. I believe uh, for historical reasons and for all my research has led me to believe this prelude is not that slow. I mean, it is slow, but it's not that slow. Most performers play this at a, a like a molto adagio, what Bach would consider maybe like adagio or molto adagio. It's more like andante, not a faster andante, but just like a nice flowing uh, andante, okay? So I consider this to be more of an andante speed, andante character. It's in 6-4 time. 6-4 is a rather rare time signature, but uh, it was described in Bach's day as being a slow time signature. So 6-4 and also its related time signature of 3-2 are um, both slow time signatures. They're not fast. And so this is where I derive my theory that Bach's courants, his French courants, are all played too fast as well. Because this is sort of in the style and rhythm of and the meter of a French courant. But French courants are not fast. They're actually quite slow, andante in style, and quite majestic in character. So that being said, uh, my particular tempo for this is 96 uh, beats per minute. So I'm going to put here quarter note equals 96. Quarter note equals 96. Okay. Now, uh, we'll, we won't test that out yet. But uh, let's go to now the fugue. Let's see what the fugue consists of. The fugue it is in 2-2 two, two time, it's in cut time, which is the same as 2-2, two, two, two half notes per beat, two half notes per beat like this, and then later on you can see that Bach in his third subject here, no, the second, in the second subject actually here, you have 
um, eighth notes here. Da 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 da. So if you take these eighth notes and these eighth notes, I believe that Bach wanted these exactly at the same tempo. So that would be like just a, a, a replacement of the beat. It would be what we would call in the 20th century period a metric modulation because it retains the same tempo but it puts the beat on a different, on, on, on a different place. So here we have one and two and three and four and five and six in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say that's our tempo. So I'm gonna take, leave that consistent, and I'm gonna take this. Dum, bum, bum, bum. Nice, slow half note beat. So your half note beat of the fugue is equal to the half note of this, although you don't really have straight half notes because it's in 6-4, but they are equated. Now, let me explain why I think that's so. One reason why I think that's so is because it's musically perfect. I think these are the perfect tempi for this prelude and fugue. Now, if you doubt that and you want to challenge me on that, go and listen to my recent recording of this prelude and fugue. I recorded an overhead uh, view uh, a nice, clean performance of this prelude and fugue, and I demonstrated these tempos exactly. So I play the prelude at 96 per quarter note, and I play the fugue at 48 per half note. Okay, that would be, that would mean they're equal. So 96 per quarter equals 48 per half note. Now, what happens if you were to perform these at these tempos, like I do in my video, by the way, all you have to do is click on the upper uh, right of this video there in that little um, box and it will bring you right to my performance video of this prelude and view. So you can hear these tempos in actual practice, actual practice. I actually play these tempos. Now let's, Let's go over the details of this prelude and fugue and, and I'll explain why or how I came up with this crazy theory of temp all these, these crazy relationships in box music. All right, the prelude consists of 39 measures of 6-4 time, 39. The fugue consists of 115 measures of 2-2. Two, two. Now, I, I further broke that down into quarter notes. So uh, the common, sort of the common main note value here of the quarter note. So 39 measures of 6-4 is the same as 234 quarter notes long. The fugue, 115 measures of 2-2 is the same or equals 460 quarter notes long. Now, do you see a relationship? 460, 234. Well, what, what happens if we just, if, if this were four quarter notes shorter? That's all, four quarter notes shorter. That's less than one measure. That's like less than one measure. So if, if, it, if it had um, just four, fewer quarter notes, it would be 230. 230 is half of 460. That means it's half as long. So if you play the quarter note at the same speed, obviously the fugue will last two times longer than the prelude, forming a one to two ratio. Now, I have found in Bach's music, not just his keyboard music, but all his music, that Bach followed a unique system. He only used three main proportions in his durations. He used one to one, that's equal durations. 
he used one to two, one, one movement is two times longer than the other, and two to three, one movement is like one half longer than the other. I don't find many threes to fours or fours to threes in terms of the durations of the movement. So uh, my research really shows that Bach really cared about three important proportions, one to one, one to two, and two to three. In this particular case, it's one to two. So now if you take 39 measures and you go 39 times six, that's the number of quarter notes, divided by 96, so 39 times six divided by 96, you'll get 2.4 something. Okay, now that 0.4 something, that's the seconds out of 60 seconds. So in other words, if you translate that to a duration, that's two minutes and 26 seconds. In other words, if you just sit down and play this prelude exactly at 96, let's say you're a robot, you sit down, you play it exactly at 96 from beginning to end, it will last exactly two minutes and 26 seconds. Okay, but I know we're not robots, things go wrong, but this is just an ideal. Now, the fugue, 100, let, let's figure out the, um, the, dura the, the number of minutes and seconds that this would last at its tempo. So its tempo is 48 per half note. So you take 115 times two, because there's, there's two beats in the measure, and then you go divided by 48. So 115 times two divided by 48 you'll get 4.8 something, 4.8 something. So you see it's just a little bit under five minutes. So you see that four minutes and 48 seconds. Now, really interesting is this. What happens when you take 226 and you times that by two? Well, you get, you get four, 52. Well, how much is 452 off from 448? It's only four seconds. <laughs> so, so either, either, okay, if Bach made the prelude just a tiny bit longer, just if it were four seconds longer, like one measure longer, its duration would have been exactly two minutes and 30 seconds, two and a half minutes. That would have been in the case of 40 measures. So if he, if he had attained actually two more, two more measures, I mean one more measure, I was thinking it was 38. So one more measure of 40, 40 times six divided by 96 is exactly 2.5, two and a half minutes. Now the few. Let's say if Bach had just made the fugue a little bit longer, just a few measures longer, so it would last five minutes. In order to attain five minutes, uh, to uh, rectify that kind of odd duration of 448, Bach would have had to have 120 measures instead of 115 measures. So 120 times two, divided by 48 equals five, exactly. So you can see that Bach was very accurate here. So he composed the prelude, assuming he composed the prelude first, he composed the prelude, and then he thought to himself, well, okay, the prelude has this tempo, it has tempo X, whatever his tempo was, which I believe is 96. If, if Bach knew his tempo before he composed his prelude, which I believe he did, I mean, wouldn't you think that a composer like Bach would, would plan his tempo? He, he didn't just write a bunch of notes down, he actually planned his, 
how fast or how slow we wanted this pace. You didn't tell us that though. That my job is to figure that out. So I'm like a musical detective trying to figure out what was running through Bach's head. What was going through his mind? Well, let me show you something really interesting here. Really, really interesting. I have a printout actually from, it's actually the, the very end of the prelude, the very end of the prelude. And it says, I printed it out here. It's the holograph manuscript, Bach's own manuscript here. You can go to IMSLP and look at it. I'll have a link below this where you can look at that. And if you look very carefully here at, if you look very carefully, you'll see, you'll see the number 39 written down up here in the upper top. Why would, and I'm assuming that's Bach 39. He wrote the numbers 39 here, 30. Why would Bach write 39? Like with little numbers here at the end of the prelude when it has 39 measures. Well, he doesn't do that all the time, but I think that this gives us a good clue into what Bach was thinking. So what he did was he composed his prelude and then he kept track he, he, of the number of measures. He said, okay, 39, this has 39 measures. Then he figured out, okay, in order, what, how long does it last at its tempo at 39 measures? And he figured that out. He figured out, okay, it lasts two and a half minutes. So then he told himself, okay, the prelude is gonna last two and a half minutes. I want the fugue to last two times longer at five minutes. So how did he do this? Well, uh, assuming he, he composed the prelude first, then he would have composed the fugue backwards. He would have actually had to figure out before he composed the fugue, he would have had to figure out how many measures he wanted in the fugue. So there, there's a couple possibilities. Either he wrote 39 down and he figured out uh, the, exact, uh, the exact number of measures to result in a duration two times longer. And that, by the way, what happens if you take 39 times three? 39 times three, you get 117. So I believe he was either aiming for 39 measures and 117 measures in order to put them at an exact one to two ratio, but, or here's what I believe he was actually doing. And, and in, he was, before he composed the prelude and fugue, I think, of course, there's no way of proving this, but I believe after seeing this in many, many examples, I believe that Bach um, planned the ideal here. So before he wrote the prelude, he told himself, okay, uh, I want 40 measures in the prelude and I want 120 measures in the fugue because they have these tempos and 40 measures and 120 measures at their particular time signatures at their tempos result in durations of two and a half minutes in five minutes. And so if Bach did that, if he planned beforehand how long, how many measures and what the tempo he wanted for his prelude and fugue, then, then in what I believe, and my theory states that, that these were done sort of by accident. So these were ideal, idealized lengths. And then in actual, in actual practice, Bach attained 39 and 115, which is still really, really close. I mean, it, it, we're only talking just a, like four seconds off from a perfect one to two duration ratio. So uh, to make a long story short and to make this really easy, um, uh, I would suggest going over and listening to my recording of this. Listen with an open mind 
Uh, I play the Fugue. Uh, this tempo for the Fugue 48 is a little slower than most performers take it, but it's rock solid from beginning to end. Now, when you listen to these, put on your timer. Put on a stopwatch or a timer and time my performances of these. Um, in my performance, the, the prelude lasts exactly two minutes and 32 seconds. So with my nice retardando at the end, I, I do, my performance is just a, a couple seconds over two and a half minutes. I hit it perfectly. Then the fugue, and I actually did this on the first take in the fugue. The fugue, I last, the fugue lasts almost exactly, almost exactly uh, five minutes. I mean, it's like, um, I don't know, it's like four minutes and 55 seconds or something like that. So the, the last time I, I timed it. Prelude at 96, fugue at 48. If you do this, in terms of tempo, at least, you will be right around what Bach intended. Bach intended the prelude to last two and a half minutes and the fugue five minutes. If you list, go and listen to famous performers. Listen to anyone you want. Listen to Richter. Listen to Gould, Glenn Gould. Listen to uh, Murray Pariah. Listen to all these great pianists. And write down how many of them get close to these. How many famous performers actually play two and a half minutes for the prelude and five minutes for the fugue? Almost nobody. Almost nobody. You might find, yeah, you'll find a few of them play at two and a half minutes for the prelude, but um, I don't know. You're gonna have a hard time finding a performer do five minutes for the fugue. You might. I don't know, but it's going to be virtually impossible, I think, to find a performer that plays two and a half minutes and five minutes for this prelude and fugue. So that being said, your assignment now is to go over and listen to my performance of it. I'm not the greatest pianist in the world, okay? But my tempo is the greatest in the world. These are the tempos or the tempi, however you want to say it, that Bob planned for his music. So because I figured this out, uh, I think we need to start thinking about uh, staying close to Bach's wishes and doing what he intended, which is to get two and a half minutes and five minutes. And that solves the whole thing. This prelude and fugue is solved. It's solved. I don't think anyone can challenge this. Well, you can try, but you're gonna have a hard time. And this is really typical, highly typical of Bach's music, as I discuss in my book and a blog. So thank you for joining me today. This is really fun. And um, so um, I'll have more videos like this in the future. In the meantime, go and do some listening and some philosophizing about Bach's tempos. Until we meet again.